It's the Living in Bosnia and Herzegovina podcast and today uh, is a little bit better than yesterday because yesterday I was supposed to be speaking to this gentleman and then, you know, living in a Bosnian village for those that come from the Western Balkans, name a stroja, strom ausfall, uh, power cut, whichever language you want to use and amazingly frustrating. So I have my fingers crossed today because we've had power back all day. I just hope I don't um jinx it i'm not very good with languages i suppose i'm typically british but somebody is in the netherlands today so i'm gonna i'm gonna really try it now who had it with you fantastic thank you very much fantastic netherlands thank you all well that's about the limit of uh, of everything that i can say um in dutch we're going to be talking about tourism uh today with uh my guest who is hubert uh, Neymar, who's in Enskeda. I think I might have pronounced that marginally Hello. right. But you're right across on the eastern border of the Netherlands, aren't you? Right bang up next to Germany, I think. Yeah, exactly. I always say uh, we are between Amsterdam and Berlin. We are in Europe, right? So uh, some say you're at the border of, uh, of the Netherlands, but I always say more in the center of Europe, but indeed. Now, I'm going to find out a little bit about Huber in his own words in just a second but in total transparency i've talked to hubert before he's got a superb company uh and an online presence which i am sort of like a newbie helping out in a little way but we'll find out about that hubert there's no finer person to tell us about you than you so my first two-part question uh to you is what are you who are you and what is this fantastic online company that you've got? Thank you. And thank you for, uh, for the time and stage to, uh, to keep a short introduction about myself and our company. Um, yeah, my name is Hubert, Hubert Nijmeijer, uh, living in Enschede. I um, started the company uh, High High Guide in 2014. Um, why I started this company? A few reasons. One, we like to give everyone the opportunity to book a private guide, so make it more affordable and accessible. And secondly, we like to give everyone the opportunity to get in touch with it through local life. So give them a more authentic experience. Start first in the Netherlands. We are also based in the Netherlands. But quickly expanded. And now we are active in 50 countries. And we have a bit more than 3,000 locals at our platform. Travelers can book a private tour with a local. Um, so when you are heading to... Uh, Banja Luka, you can book David. <laughs> but if you're heading to Lisbon, you can book uh, uh, another guide. Um, and the guide will yeah, show you the city through their eyes. So um, it can be uh, a hidden gem or a special neighborhood, which is less popular, but still amazing to visit. And those stories are, are nice to tell, but also to know for the, for the tourists, right? So we like to help also um, a lot of cities with coping too much tourism. Of course, now it's... It's suddenly gone, of course, with COVID, but it will come back. Um, but if you look to a few cities which are coping with too much tourism, they are all going to the center of the city and it will be too dense. It's not good for the city. It's not good for the locals who are living there. It's also not good for the tourists. Um, so we like to help them to get the best experience, an authentic experience, um, and explore the city like, like locals do. And during COVID, uh, we also thought about something new. Um, everybody could use to video calling or doing podcasts from, from a distance. And um, we, uh, we created video call a local and it gives customers, travelers, the chance to uh, schedule a call with a local of the destination they are going to. Um, with this service, we are also uh, entering the inspiration phase and everybody needs to have inspiration and who knows best, right? Locals. So they can call a local via video chat and ask questions like, what should I do? Uh, what should I see? Which restaurants should I book? Uh, I like to run five miles in the morning. Which park should I do uh, my morning run? These kind of questions. And it's easy for locals to share and also for the locals uh, to say, you know, when you're here, I can also guide you around. So it will be already created some connection. And that's what we're into, right? It's, it's not a, only about the location where people are going to, but it's also about the culture and sharing interests, sharing knowledge, and making it nice, making a nice conversation. You know, it's, it's good for, uh, for, our, for all the world to, to understand this concept. 
uh, and doing too. And uh, hopefully tourism will change after COVID, you know, that people are more coming more in depth in the city, stay longer and try to understand how people live there. What, what's their culture? Where's their religion? How's the, uh, the political side? These kind of things. Um, so we hope that we can help a lot of people and change their mind when they are traveling. How difficult has it been to find these people, to get your your part of the travel and tourism story out? Because I've, I've been watching a few webinars uh, recently uh, where everybody seems still, and I don't know why, uh, they're still stuck on the strategic level of everything. Um, and they s singularly fail to think about um, I don't know, to put it in a military way, the tactical side of it, the people who are actually going to deliver um, the experience uh, for travellers. It's all, you know, about online marketing and spending um, lots of money. How difficult has it been for you to find these guys and girls uh, truly on the front line, as it were, that the people that are actually going to advise us on, you know, those hidden gems that, mainline tourist guides even they uh don't know too much about yeah yeah so um uh, we have a marketplace so on one side you have the guides and the other side you have the travelers so they need to find each other um regarding the guides locals we uh, we didn't have spent that much money in marketing on it in the first beginning yes we need to do you know because you're not 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 and an, 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 uh, there's no name there's no brand so you need to invest in that uh, but right now we see that we get a lot of traction a lot of guides are uh, without any job right now so they are looking for new channels to get business and uh, luckily we are one of them they um, they find and and they register with us um, I, I think we, we, a lot of guides are on the same page with us. So they, they look at the vision uh, of our company, um, our values. And that, that's, that's, I think, the most important one. You need to be connected with the company you are dealing with. Um, it's also, of course, for, for the travelers, but especially for the guides. And I think it's important as a company, if, if you look at high eye guide, it's important to, to understand that we are not important as high eye guide. It's the guides are important. They are doing the job and they are uh, taking care of the customers. So um, it's very important to, to keep connected, um, but also try to understand why they do it, uh, but also try to understand who's the personality, you know, and um, it's a human business, you know, it's a personal business. And I think people, uh, we'll understand it better in the future. Um, but some companies are in for the numbers, and, and that, that's difficult, you know. If you aren't in the numbers, you forget about humanity. Uh, and I think it's, 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 about, it's about humans, it's human interaction. And I think it's far more important to have a nice review and, and to have great, great stories than a lot of uh, big financial good numbers, you know. Um, it's about bringing people together. That's the most important thing. You mentioned that word traveller. Um, which I've, which I actually agree with. I have to say, uh, I think the day of the tourist has gone. The, you know, the tourist is the, the the guy or girl, the lady or gentleman, the family that's on a fifty-two seater coach that just races around a country doing um, I don't know, uh, uh, an hour snapshot of uh, of just major tourist attractions. And as you said earlier about you know some places such as Venice, I think is a great example. Uh, what has COVID done for Venice? Yes, it's decimated its uh, tourism, but hey, the uh, canals are clean again. They've got fishing again, and the Venetian mm. people and the Venetian people have got their life back. And I think that the Venetians still want to have people coming to look at their city, but they don't want it to be um, how how do you say oversaturated? In your, at the moment, with the experience of COVID, which we none of us thought was going to happen, how do you think? traveling will adapt and what will it look like as and when uh, we can finally move around again yeah so in the beginning when in the first month you know covid hit in everybody thought, okay clean sheet you know uh, everything coming coming back probably in september and we're going to change Recently, I saw a documentary, it was about Venice, and there was some guy was, was also talking about it. He thought, okay, we're going to change things in Venice, you know, we, we make a wall around it. So people coming in, they need to pay, 
uh, or you need to stay at least for a few nights. But he mentioned, you know, a lot of people in, in the industry don't get any earnings right now. So it's really a hard time for, for, for those. And he was expecting and, um, that, that the tourism will be back to Venice in the same way. Um, I think Venice is gone, you know, it's a kind of Disneyland. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, and I, I think it's gone because I'm not sure locals were, uh, did go out the side of the city because it was too, too, too much tourism. They don't come back, right? So I think it's, it's Venice is gone, you know, but some cities like Barcelona and Amsterdam, they can figure out right now, you know, how to cope with it and to make it a, a livable place, you know, because sustainability is not only about, um, traveling CO2 free kind of way, you know, where electric cars and that kind of stuff, but it's also about being there still after 100, 200 years, you know, that's the word sustainability. And if there are no locals, you know, then you will be an attraction park like Disneyland and that can be shut down or can be open uh, when, when people say it's, it's, it's now time to open, now time to close. And that's, that's what no city likes to have, right? Um, but if you look at, at our situation, uh, we offer private guides, so small groups. At least we don't combine any groups, so it's a small group of friends or family of a couple. Um, we, we, we will be in a good position when traveling is coming back. People uh, like to understand the city better, and, and yeah, a local can, can share a lot of information about it. And if you have the old-fashioned way, indeed, in a big coach with 50 people, you cannot have a conversation with the tour leader, and probably the tour leader is 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 is, is someone who's doing the whole country or uh, or the whole region, or um, so just something else. And I think people will understand. You know, um, I, I like to to do uh, act like a local, and um, because it's better for myself, but also better for the city. And I think people will understand it better. But it's it's. I'm not sure if the people are from China are doing the same way we are traveling from, from Western Europe. Um, I think it needs time to, to get involved in the whole world. But it starts, I think, in Western Europe and America to travel differently. Um, and it's also something with do, to do with technology, right? When you don't have any internet when you are traveling, you need to book it at, at home, everything in front, of course. Uh, but now you, you have a phone you are connected. Um, so people are, are traveling differently because it feels like already some like home because you have your phone always there and you can chat with your friends constantly. Um, but it's, it, I, th I think people, um, um, yeah, w will get the chance now to, to, to do it differently. Um, but it's also about the supply, right? So if you have TUI offering cruise ships, um, if it's still there, people book it, but, if it will be prohibited, um, I hope so, honestly. But um, um, that people cannot book it, so they don't want to travel with 5,000 other people and entering a city like Dubrovnik and screw it for two, two hours, buying an ice cream and going back on a cruise ship. Uh, I think that's not good tourism. But yeah, if, it's, it's, if there's still companies who are doing it, yeah, then people will book it and will be still there. So um, it will shift slowly, I think slowly to the better way it's funny that you mentioned dubrovnik because that <laughs> that's what i wanted to talk about now dubrovnik is a, uh, a an ancient venetian city um right at the bottom of uh croatia and over the past years nobody goes to look at dubrovnik history anymore they go for the game of thrones tour yeah, yeah. i believe um, that there, I can't remember the name in Croatian, but there's a small part of Dubrovnik that has its own traditional name and everything. Now been renamed to King's Landing. I mean, it, it, it's absolutely crazy. We're around Dubrovnik down there at the bottom of the Dinaric Alps, uh, very close to Bosnia Herzegovina, very close to Montenegro. Uh, tremendous culture, uh, food and wine experiences to die for. And as you say, people just pour off the boat out of the, 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 the coach and they want to see all these places where their favorite film stars uh, and where they got off on, on, on Game of Thrones, which I, which I think is, is like uh, factory, factory tourism. Uh, 
Mm. Whereas I'm hoping, and I'd, I'd like to take get your take on this. Um, when you look at High High Guide at the moment, um, uh, most guides have got a tip uh, ab- about the locals. And for me, I I wanted to talk about the famous Banyaluka Chivap. Not don't go to a restaurant, go to this small hole in the wall that's been there for generations and have it. I suppose when you go to London, it's like having a British breakfast. Highly unhealthy, but it's got to be done because it's cultural, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, where, where do you think High High Guide and, and, and your own personal feelings goes to a phrase that grew out of Italian cuisine maybe 20, 25 years ago, the slow food movement is now, yeah. the, is now the slow travel movement. Do you find that there's a synergy between uh, your values uh, and your initiative and the way of traveling in a much slower pace, definitely living with locals and eating their food? Is, 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 is that joined up as far as you're concerned? Yeah. Yeah, when we started the company, I created a kind of PowerPoint. It was quite uh, quite badly, I understand, <laughs> if I look back right now. But I, I put some writings over there, you know. And, and one, one of them was um, uh, getting a friend somewhere else, but you don't have a friend, so it will be a paid friend, a local guide, you know. Um, when you have a friend, and you can imagine that, you know, you are from, from England, that you, you have friends around the world, when you go somewhere, when you have a friend, it don't matter how, how what's the situation at the at the city, you know. The city is already nice because you have a friend o- over there, and your friend will point you the way, you know, which are the best restaurants, what to see, what to do, um, and you always stay longer with your friend. And it's it's we are not as similar, of course, you know. Local guys and friends are differently, but we like to be on, on that part, you know, if that uh, that you have a kind of friend, so. Um, that 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 you will stay longer in the city because you understand the city better. Um, you know, the, the, you find your way easier, and and feeling at home somewhere else. That's that's definitely possible, right? Um, so I think we we can we can be there for 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 customers to be longer in the city, and and enjoy it more like being home somewhere else. Um, and you know, people. You need to stay somewhere, of course, an accommodation and a nice spot, nice neighborhood. But people do matter always, you know. What do you remember when you have, uh, when you travel to, yeah. For me, I was to Cape Town and had a conversation over there with a guy, you know. It was a really funny conversation. I still remember the conversation and it was about stupid things. But it's, that's, that's the things that you are remembering. Of course, the Table Mountain was beautiful. But it, you, you remember the conversation and... Uh, when you have someone who is there, who can help you out and, and give you a tour and, and give you great advice what to do and what to see, people will stay longer in the city and the city can be less attractive like not a Dubrovnik, not a Paris or you name it. Cities are attractive because you know people there. So, yeah, definitely. I think we can we can do something there. There's a lot of people that listen to this podcast who are from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um uh, they check my blog and they te- check my past, uh, my, my, my podcast out because I can't believe about how I am so passionate about the country. And uh, a lot of people that come here, friends, relatives uh, and strangers who have just hooked on and come along, uh, have said to me when I say, well, what, you know, before you came to see me today, you, you must have bumped into some locals. How was it? And they went, well, the first thing that comes out of a local's mouth in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina is, why have you come here? There's a singular lack of appreciation, I think, of people in this country of the beauty they've got. There's eight mm. microclimates here. There's, you know, it's where East meets West. It's, it's, it's got history so deep. In fact, if you go to Sarajevo, there's a line in the, in the ground between the Holy Roman Empire at one point uh, and, and Ottomans. Yes, they've got some bad raps, uh, in their history, they allegedly they started the First World War. I I think that's totally wrong, but that's that. Um, what advice have you got as somebody that's involved with traveling and trying to inspire people to explore this world more? To say to people, for example, uh, here in Bosnia Herzegovina, I believe it's the same in Romania and Moldova and other places, who think why why should why should anybody want to come here? I mean why what 
ha, what advice would you give to people from, let, let's say, in my case, our case here today in Bosnia? Why should they get excited about their own country? You know, people are living at a, at a particular spot. You know, there are a few reasons: there's love, it's 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 employment, uh, and and maybe they are born and raised there. You know, and they stick there. So there are a few reasons, but they don't they don't laugh because there are friends around them, family. So that's very important, of course. But you know, you have different kind of 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 of, of tourism. Um, some like to see the highlights uh, only for the photos. Coming back at home looking at the photos, what they have done. Some are uh, into Instagram, you know, uh, the, it's really important to have Instagrammable uh, photos. Some are into food and some are into culture, you know, and uh, I think it's, it's good to know that you are living in a spot um, that you don't need an Eiffel Tower or, or a Big Ben, you know. Um, it's important how, you, or how your culture uh, it, it can be unique, then it's it's really important to have, you know, because it's unique. Uh, food culture and the stuff what you are eating at, 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 at the, the country you're living or the cities, it's so important to have, you know. People are always interested in different kind of foods, but it's not used to them when they are going coming home. So appreciate where 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 you are uh, living. It's it's very important, firstly, I think, to to understand why tourism is coming. You know, if you don't appreciate where you're living, it's really hard to imagine that tourism is coming. You know, I, I, I live in Enschede, it's a small town, less than 200,000 citizens, um, so smaller than Banja Luka. Um, but it's, it's, it's not a big tourist city, but people are, are coming in. I, 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 when I walk through to the city, I hear Spanish or Chinese, uh, English, uh, you name it. Uh, German, of course, we're close to the German border, but... Um, I, I see the attractive spots in the city, you know. There's a great terrace where you can sit and, and, and have a pint. There are great restaurants. Uh, the culture is good. Um, but a lot of people here don't understand why tourism are coming. But if you don't understand why tourism are coming, yeah, you need to explore by yourself firstly, I think. So it's really important to, to go in depth in your own city and culture to understand um, how good it is and, how, and why you are living there. And then you can also express it to others. And, um, yeah, what you mentioned, you know, you are a big promoter of, uh, of Bosnia. It's, it's, that's, that's, you know, because you have experienced a lot, you, you have a reason to stay there. So, and, and now you can shout it out and create podcasts and, and blogs and <laughs> getting people into it. Yeah, it's, that's amazing. Um, finally, um, how do you see traveling? It, it, it's going to change. I mean, we can't say, will it change? Yes, it's going to change. How, how do you see the world for the traveller in, let's say, five years? I mean, we can't say next year because, you know, it's up and down like the late Stefan Grappelli's elbow at the moment. We don't know where we are from one day to the next with lockdowns and, uh, 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 and all the other stuff that's going on. But, Hubert, where do you think we will find ourselves Um let's say in five years. I think that's a, that's a good time frame for all this to have blown over. Yeah. Um, may, may I look a little bit further? Ten years? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, <laughs> what, what's, what's Hubert's vision? What do you, how do you think the, the future is going to look traveler-wise? Yeah, so uh, I think um, personal life will change, you know, personal and, and work balance, you know. We already mentioned it, I've already experienced it with more working at home uh, instead of coming to the office. So private and work will be emerging. Um, so time off will be different kind of experience, you know. In the past, when we all work in the factory, a long time ago, um, you were working on a clock, on a minute. Then you are always want to go to a beach, you know, 10 days at a beach doing nothing. People have different kind of work right now, you know, and it will change the coming 10 years. Um, it will be more in a balanced way. So when they are going for a holiday a trip or a travel plan, they want to understand the culture more. They want to get more knowledge and improve themselves better. So what I think, what my vision is, I think people will less going to beaches and, and doing nothing, you know, uh, only eating and drinking and, and stay in the secluded stuff, but going more to, to uh, interesting country cities, 
villages um, to understand themselves better, but also the world better. And and also getting, I think, the more the idea of um, why traveling is so important. You know, you, you worked in the, in the military. Um, traveling is also about talking with each other, right? Getting in contact with each other, understand what each other's perspective is. When people are not traveling, you don't see each other, you know? So conflicts can occur more often. So I think people will understand it better in the coming years, what kind of impact traveling is. It is not only laying on the beach and doing nothing. It's about getting in touch with each other, getting in touch with different kinds of people, uh, cultures, and, and, you know, also you, do, you don't need to share the same interest, but learning constantly. I think that that will be the modus uh, which will be very important for travelers in the future. And how do you see Hi Hi Guide developing to that vision of what you think it will be in all these years to come? Yeah, so um, we, we connect people, so locals with, with travelers, and I think we, we can connect people better if we know more information about our locals and more information about our travelers, so we connect better. But maybe we can also do something, you know, that people say, okay, I have a strong opinion about this. I like to have a conversation with someone in this space who have a different kind of opinion, and I'm not like to learn, you know, why are they thinking like this? Um, it's it's not on our roadmap, but yeah, I think that's quite interesting, you know. And 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 the the, the better thing is, of course, to make the world a better place to live, um, because we don't hate each other, you know. A Republican don't hate a Democrat, you know. They're 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 humans together. But if the if they are going to to say, you know, this is black, this is white, there's no conversation. You need to have a conversation. Why someone is thinking like that? There's always a reason. And the reason can be of, of, you know, you can accept it or you cannot accept it, but just discuss it and talk with each other. And I think that's, um, that's maybe a role we can, we can play, um, not for the coming first years, but yeah, maybe in the future. You never know. i tell you one thing. You've got to come to Bosnia-Herzegovina as soon as we can get travel. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I've, I've, I've got some things to show you. Um, oh, cool. and, I, and I think that you will... I, I think you'll love it. And I say that because uh, of all my Dutch friends, even those from Brabant, sorry, um, uh, <laughs> all my Dutch friends have, have, have just had a blast, had a, had a, had a total blast. Uh, and we would seriously like to see you and some of your team members down here. I did say shameless self-promotion. So Give us all the places uh, or give us all the information once again about Hi Hi Guide. So um, when people go, what did he say? That they can look in the description below this if they see this in video format or if they're listening in audio format that they know exactly where to go. So you're just one click away from Hi Hi Guide. So where can where can we find you? And once again, what do you offer? Yeah. So Hi uh, Hi Guide connects travelers with locals in more than 50 countries uh, around the world. Um, we offer private tours and you can set up a video call with a local to get all the inf information you need to have to prepare your uh, city trip. Um, you can find us at www.highguide.com and yeah, you can uh, easily put in a city where you like to go and find your local or your favorite tour and uh, meet up with locals and, and get an amazing experience. Hubert, thank you so much for giving me your time. Uh, I'm doubly grateful because there we were waiting last night. <laughs> you, most probably, <laughs> you most probably had no problems with the electricity, but we were here yeah, not no quite in the dark, but whatever. So no I'm truly appreciative of that. Um, and I'll catch you soon. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you so much, when, David. When we're, talk, when we're talking high, high guide um, business. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was... Hubert Niemeyer from Einschkede, and I'm about to say, tot ziens. Tot ziens. <laughs>